Well, welcome back. This is Larry Stoll from Pace Turf again. And weather conditions are becoming a little bit warmer uh, in some areas of the country, at least down in the southern tier of the country. We know you're having a little bit of a problem in the northeastern part of the country. Uh, but you're probably still having uh, some problems with diseases that you don't even know about under, under snow and those types of things. Well, in the south, when, uh, when temperatures stay below 62 and sort of stay between freezing and 62 Fahrenheit, we start to see problems with diseases like microdokian patch or pink snow mold. So what I'm going to do is show you a little bit about the diagnosis of, of this disease, compare it a little bit to uh, the structures of uh, a disease anthracnose that has similar types of spores, but they, they don't occur at the same time of year, so it's really not a problem. And there's a lot of mycelium produced by, uh, by the, uh, by the microdokian patch. And if you look closely uh, through the hand lens, remember you put the hand lens close to your eye when you're looking at the samples, and move the sample in and out until you can see a little bit better what you're looking at. Uh, we'll show you what you can see here. So with the hand lens, you can see a little bit, you can see some mycelium, but you can't see uh, too much else. Let's take this sample to the dissecting scope and look a little bit more carefully at the leaves of the plant and we'll see what we're looking for. I'll show you what you're looking for as far as the spore shape and size and location of the spores on the plant. Typically what we'd be looking for in the case of Microdochium nivale would be a structure called a sporodochium. It'd be a mass of spores and canidia fours uh, being produced on the leaf surface. Uh, we can't see them very clearly here and sometimes in diagnostic samples you won't see them clearly. But if you take a piece of the leaf, we'll be able to see a little bit better under a compound microscope what we're looking for. So just place a, a drop of water on a, on a microscope slide, then we'll drop the leaf into that drop of water. And sometimes we'll get a little piece of a sand particle. In this case, is, uh, that's what happened. There's a little bit of an annoying uh, problem with that. The sand particle is just below the leaf. When we put the cover slip over the leaf, uh, you'll see it prevents the leaf from being compressed when I push on the leaf with the forceps. You see that the uh, water moves around, but I can't compress the leaf. Uh, in this case, it's, you can go in there and take it out, or you can just fill up the uh, cover slip with water from the edge uh, using the dropper bottle. When you transfer this to the compound microscope, uh, you can take a look in low magnification and dark field, and you'll see a lot of spores in the background. There aren't really readily defined sporodokia. But when we look a little bit closer, we'll see that we have the spores that are typical for Microdochium nivale, about 12 microns long, one to three septa. So as we scan around, this is in uh, phase contrast microscopy, and zoom in a little bit, we'll get a better idea of what these spores look like. Uh, here's a spore that has uh, three septa marked by the arrows, uh, pretty clearly uh, meeting the criteria of Microdochium nivale. And we'll show you another one, uh, in the case this one only has one septum in the middle, but it's one to three septa around 12 microns long, maybe varying depending on how mature the spores are. Now if we look at the field symptoms, they're pretty clear for something like Microdochium nivale, and I'll talk a little bit about anthracnose because the spores are similar in shape. But this is what it would look like uh, in a field in a severe condition, and here's what the sample would look like when it arrives at the lab, usually 24 hours after the sample is pulled, and if you incubate this sample for another 24 hours, you'll get something that looks like this, similar to the sample that we uh, use for the diagnosis that we're preparing here. And if you look closely at these samples, what we'd like to see in the ideal case are the sporodokia. You can see the little bumps on this leaf in the center of the image uh, right here. And if you take these leaves and you put them under a compound microscope, you'd see a more defined mass of spores. This is under ideal conditions with not too much rainfall to wash these things away. Well, if you take these uh, spores and magnify them a little higher, you'll see the typical one to three septa per cell fusiform shaped cells as typical for Microdochium nivale. Now, if we compare that to anthracnose, this is what the symptoms look like in the field frequently, uh, even more dispersed because it's more of a stress-related uh, problem. Doesn't produce a lot of uh, mycelium in the lab. And we see these characteristic lesions, which are acervuli, which are different than sporodokia, and they produce these black structures called CD. Those are very typical for anthracnose. So this would be a, a burst in the leaf tissue. We see a pile of spores uh, with CD sticking around them that would be typical for anthracnose. And the spores look slightly different. They don't have sort of a septa structure in the spores, but they have a, a central uh, fat globule that is a lighter colored. So that's typical for anthracnose. 
Refer to the links associated with this update for more information on management and control of Microdochium nivalli.